Hi guys, I'm Kristen and this is Kristen is Fully Booked. Today I'm going to share with you a ton of assassin book recommendations for my upcoming Assassins in April readathon. Last week I announced that in April I'll be hosting a week-long readathon featuring books about assassins. So from midnight on April 15th, the Friday night, until the following Saturday night at midnight, April 23rd, every book that you read that features an assassin will get you an additional hit. Each hit will get you an entry into a draw for a grand prize. I will pre-order a book of your choice or a new release from this year. Now there are ways to make your book count for more and that includes our bonus prompts, but I'll put all of the information down below. There is a link in the description box, not only for the announcement video with all of the details, but as well a link to the Google Drive where there is an infographic with all of the information and a link to the form where you can register your hits during the readathon. To help you prepare for this readathon, I put together a huge list of books that feature an assassin. There have already been some questions about what does and doesn't technically count as an assassin. I will say that my definition is someone who is trained, hired, or paid to assassinate someone. They don't necessarily even have to do it in the book. They could be retired. They could never go through with it. They could just even be in training. But my thought here is that we are focusing on trained killers not necessarily someone who just happens to assassinate someone. Think of it more as the distinction between the noun and the verb. We're really, really focusing on the noun in this case. So that being said, I have tried to put together a huge list of book recommendations for you to read during this readathon. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who commented in the announcement video with recommendations or who commented and shared recommendations on the various discords that I have been asking for book recommendations with assassins the last couple weeks. So thank you so much to everyone who has made recommendations, who has contributed to this. I honestly was just so grateful and surprised at the amount of feedback that I got for this. What I will say is that obviously all of the books that I'm going to mention here I have not read. I've only read a couple of them already, so I'm excited to get into this readathon myself. So if there are some where it is a little bit questionable as to whether or not they are assassins or if this book counts, and you know the answer, you've read the book, put it down in the comments down below. Additionally, if you know if one of the books that I mentioned today does fit a particular bonus prompt, feel free to put that in the comment section down below as well so that other people know if they're going to be reading a book that will get them extra points. Now the bonus prompts, just a reminder here again, are girl power. So you read a book that featuring a female assassin, not all the good die young, so reading a book that is published prior to 2010, learning can kill, read a book that features the assassin training or that is set in a school, fight to survive, a book that has a large battle scene, and call it like it is, a book that has the word assassin, kill, or blade in the title. So if you know that a book that I mentioned in the recommendations here fits one or more of those prompts, let people know down below. I am not settling on a specific TBR for this as I don't know what will be available at the library at that time, but there are two books in particular that I'm going to try to prioritize. But when I was making this list, a lot of the books really caught my eye. So I don't have a specific TBR outside of the two books that I'm going to try to prioritize. But because I'm not really going for points in this, I'm not entering myself into this draw, I might even just try out a few different books over the course of the week to see which ones really stick with me. Okay, that being said, I have more than 20 recommendations to share with you today, so I will just jump right into it. I have split them up into adult fantasy and young adult fantasy, so I will start with the adult fantasy books. The Farseer Trilogy, beginning with the book Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This book would work for the bonus prompt, Learning Can Kill, Call It Like It Is, and Not All the Good Die Young. Royal Bastard Fitz lives in the castle, kept aside, uncared for, friendless, and alone. Knowing the risk a royal bastard is to the throne, his grandfather the king decides to have Fitz train as an assassin to meet his own ends. This is the start to an expansive world, the realm of the Elderlings, with three separate trilogies featuring Fitz, Farseer, Tawny Man, and Fitz and the Fool. If you've left off somewhere in this series in the past, now is a great time to pick up the next book. I'll be reading the third book in the Farseer trilogy, Assassin's Quest, for the readathon. The Book of the Ancestor, beginning with the book Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. Each book in this trilogy meets the bonus prompts for Girl Power, Learning Can Kill, and the third book Holy Sister can additionally meet the prompt Fight to Survive. Set in a world with a dying son, orphan Nona Gray winds up being sold to the Convent of Sweet Mercy, a religious convent of trained magical assassins. Falsely accused of murder, but guilty of worse, Nona's secret and violent past finds her out, bringing with it the tangled politics of a crumbling empire. 
I have read this full trilogy and I talked about it in my video completed series from 2020. So check out that video. I'll link it above and below. The Wounded Kingdom series, beginning with the book Age of Assassins by R.J. Barker. This is a book that I'll be prioritizing for the readathon. To catch an assassin, use an assassin. Garden Clubfoot, apprentice to the land's best assassin, still has much to learn about the art of taking lives, but his latest mission tasks him and his master with a far more difficult challenge, to save a life. In a kingdom on the brink of civil war, in a castle thick with lies, Gurdon finds friends he never expected, responsibilities he never wanted, and a conspiracy that could destroy an entire kingdom. The Night Angel Trilogy, beginning with the book The Way of Kings by Brent Weeks. A guild rat growing up in the slums, Azoth knows survival is precarious and risks are sometimes worth taking, like apprenticing himself to the city's most accomplished assassin. To be accepted, Azoth must let go of his old life and learn to navigate the assassin's world of dangerous politics and strange magics, and cultivate a flair for death. This was Brent Week's debut novel, so I've heard that it is a little bit rough around the edges, but still very good. The Echo Saga, beginning with The Rise of the Ranger by Philip C. Quaintrell. This is the beginning of a classically epic nine-book completed fantasy series that I first heard about on Petrick's channel, so I'll link that video and you can also check out his review on Goodreads. Mankind has lorded over the land of Ilion for a thousand years, building on the ruins left by the elves. A thousand years is a long time for an immortal race to see the truth of things, a truth that has remained unsaid for a millennium, that elves are superior, and Ilion should belong to them. Thrown into the heart of this war is a man known by many names, an outlander of the wilds, an assassin, a ranger. Asher was born a thousand years ago, to a life he doesn't remember. The Ryeria Revelations, beginning with the two-book bind-up Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. Thieves and mercenaries Royce and Hadrian make a living carrying out dangerous assignments for nobles until a job to steal a famed sword finds the two framed for the king's murder and embroiled in a conspiracy that threatens more than just the kingdom. There is also a bit of an asterisk as to whether or not Royce and Hadrian count as assassins. However, Patrick from the channel Patrick Ryan has weighed in here and says that at some point within this series, the two are contracted for a murder. It is technically within their abilities, so I will also give it to you guys for this one. Skull Sworn by Brian Staveley. This one comes highly recommended by my friend Taylor and is a standalone prequel in the Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne world. While it does feature a character that exists in the Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, it neither spoils nor are you required to read that trilogy before reading this standalone novel. And I will say that this one has definitely caught my eye for the readathon. Pira Lakator is not, in her mind, an assassin, not a murderer. She is a priestess. At least, she will be once she passes her final trial. But in order to pass her trial, she must kill someone who she once loved. And so, as her trial is set to begin, she returns to the city of her birth in the hope of finding love. And ending it on the edge of her sword. The Dreamblood Duology, beginning with the book The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. Gatherer Hero spends his life upon rooftops and among the shadows of the cobbled streets of Guahari. A priest of the dream goddess, his duty is to harvest the magic of the sleeping mind and use it to heal, soothe, and kill those judged corrupt. A conspiracy blooming in the temple has a hero questioning everything he knows and protecting the woman he was sent to kill. Judith from the channel Dead Good Book Reviews has a full series review for this one, so I'll link that in the cards above and the description down below. The Chainbreaker series is a six-book completed series beginning with the book The Risen Shard by D.K. Holmberg. Trained to kill from a young age, Gavin has finally escaped that life. No more killing innocents, no more working alone. Invited to a new city where work is plenty and the people are welcoming, it almost seems too good to be true. Good fortune is, in fact, fleeting. Gavin finds himself fighting a new enemy, and by the time he learns sorcery is involved, he's already in too deep. I really like the idea of a retired assassin series, and I have no idea if this is accurate, but it's giving me real strong Taken vibes. The Chronicles of Gadid, beginning with the book The Perfect Assassin by K.A. Dewar. As a new assassin in the Vast Bowen family, Amastin is already having second thoughts about taking a life. A scarcity of contracts ends up being just what he needs, until, unexpectedly, Vast Bowen's finest assassins start showing up dead 
and Amostin is given the task of solving the murders. Every life has its price, but when the tables are turned, Amostin must find this perfect assassin or become their next target. The Elemental Assassin series, beginning with the book Spider's Bite by Jennifer Estep. This book would qualify for the bonus prompts Girl Power. This is a paranormal urban fantasy romance with sexy assassins. On the hunt for revenge after her handler is killed, Assassin Jin pairs up with the irresistibly rugged detective Donovan Kane, who wants her dead just as much as the enemy. I've heard this book has Buffy the Vampire Slayer vibes, and if you're looking for a smutty assassin read, this book is maybe worth checking out. The Shadow Dance series, beginning with the book A Dance of Cloaks by David Dalglish. Thren Fellhorn is the greatest assassin of his time. Marshalling the thieves' guilds under his control, he declares war against the Trifect, an allegiance of wealthy and powerful nobles. His son Aaron, groomed from childhood to be his father's heir, risks his own life to protect the daughter of a priest he was sent to kill. Assassin or protector, every choice has its consequences. Scions of the Black Lotus, beginning with the book Thorn of the Night Blossoms by J.C. Kang. If you're looking for something a little shorter, check out this Asian-inspired series of novellas that would work for the bonus prompt Girl Power. Half-Elf G and Lillian appear to be mere courtesans of the floating world, but are sisters in a clan of assassins and spies serving the Emperor. The courtesans have always warred with wits and poetry, but with killers moving within the floating world and traitors plotting a rebellion, G must decide her own loyalty to the Emperor or her best friend. There is a bit of an asterisk on this one, as it isn't clear if the characters we follow are assassins or just spies, so if you've read it and can provide clarity, let us know in the comments below. The Ravenance trilogy, beginning with the book The Boy with Fire by Aparna Verma. The comps here are Dune meets the Poppy War. This 2021 self-published sci-fantasy desert high-tech fantasy world debut grapples with the power and manipulation of myth in an Indian-inspired epic fantasy. We follow a notorious assassin who was severely injured in a horrible accident and is now on the run from the authorities and his former employees, but we also follow a princess who must master fire magic before she can ascend to the throne and the current holder of the throne who is not yet ready to give it up. The Erebus Kale series, beginning with the book Twilight Falling by Paul S. Kemp. This trilogy is set in the Forgotten Realms world and would work for the bonus prompt Not All the Good Die Young. Erebus Kale, Simple Butler, or much, much more. The shadows grow long on the mean streets of Selgant, and the sun sets on one of man's service to Sembia's merchant lords. The day's end finds Erebus Kale serving a new master, one who is beyond the petty accumulation of wealth. After all, what is gold to one who trades in souls? The Imperial Assassin series, beginning with the book City of Whispers by Cat Power. Get ready for a whole bunch of keywords on this one. This appears to be a debut, self-published start to a new flintlock fantasy series set in a Middle Eastern-inspired world. It has very few reviews, but an above four-star average rating on Goodreads and would work for the prompt Girl Power. Once the Empire's most feared assassin, but framed for a murder she didn't commit, Danny is exiled to a remote desert city. Forced to work alongside a former spy, things turn deadly when the two are attacked on a routine mission. Betrayed and on the run, Danny must race against time to stop a bloodbath that will consume thousands of innocent lives. If you like gutsy heroines, high-octane action, and snarky banter, then you'll love Cat Power's gritty new tale. While still positive, many reviewers did comment on a complicatedness to the world building and characters, so definitely check out some reviews on this one to see if you'd like to read it. The Serpent Gates duology, beginning with The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. This sounds like it will work for the bonus prompts Girl Power and Learning Can Kill, and additionally has lots of LGBTQ tags on Goodreads. On the day of Corsay's foretold death as a sacrifice, a powerful mage offers her a new fate. She leaves her home, her destiny, and her god to become the wizard's loyal sword hand, stealing, spying, and killing to help him reclaim his seat of power in the homeland from which he was exiled. The sequel to this book, The Thousand Eyes, just came out in February of this year. Before jumping into young adult fantasy, I have one non-fantasy book here, and that is 
Trouble the Saints by Aliyah Don Johnson, a fantastical alternate historical fiction set in New York City at the dawn of World War II, a girl from Harlem is drawn into the glittering Manhattan underworld where she's hired to strike fear amongst its dangerous denizens. Trouble the Saints is a dazzling, daring novel, a magical love story, a compelling chronicle of interracial tension, and an altogether brilliant and deeply American saga. To kick things off in the young adult fantasy category, we'll start with this powerhouse series, Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. This seven book series begins with a short, straightforward, and easy to read first book and really expands from there. If you're trying to reach Master Assassin level in this readathon, picking up the first couple books in this series is not a bad idea, as they're pretty short and easy to read. One year after being betrayed, captured, and sent to work in slave camps, 18-year-old Selena Sardothian, Ardalan's most famous assassin, is summoned to the castle to compete in a competition with 23 other killers, thieves, and warriors to become the king's champion. But something evil dwells within the castle of glass, and it's there to kill. Excluding book number six, Tower of Dawn, all the other books in this series fit the prompt girl power. There's also a collection of short stories called The Assassin's Blade, fitting the prompt Call It Like It Is, that I would recommend picking up before you get to book number four. Books three, Air of Fire, five, Empire of Storms, and seven, Kingdom of Ash, also fit the prompt Fight to Survive. The Remnant Chronicles, beginning with the book The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Princess Leah escapes her arranged marriage to the prince of a neighboring kingdom by running away to live as a local tavern girl in a small town, where she meets two handsome strangers. One, the prince she left at the altar. The other, an assassin sent to kill her. Deception abounds and Leah finds herself on the brink of unlocking perilous secrets, even as she finds herself falling in love. I have read this trilogy and really enjoyed it. We follow both the prince and the assassin's POVs in addition to Leah's, and the way that it's written, you can't actually tell which of the men she's met are which. This was so well done, I was convinced at various times that one guy and then the other were the prince and not the assassin, and vice versa. The Nevernight Chronicles, beginning with the book Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, this book meets the prompts for girl power and learning can kill and probably doesn't need an introduction here. Driven by revenge for the death of her family, Mia apprentices into a school of deadly assassins, but there's a killer loose inside. Will she even survive initiation, let alone her revenge? This book gives off cult classic vibes, with a distinct over-the-top writing style and infamous footnotes. The Nightblade Trilogy, beginning with the book Nightblade by Ryan Kirk. This book meets the prompts for girl power, learning can kill, and call it like it is. Mariko is torn from her family and forced to learn from the realm's most dangerous assassin. We also follow Ryu, an orphan found and taken in by a wandering warrior, and Takako, who is sold by her father into a world she doesn't understand. When their lives crash together in a kingdom on the brink of war, the decisions they make will change both their lives and their kingdom forever, if they can stay alive. Described by reviewers as a dark YA coming-of-age series with assassins that feel like samurai warriors meets Jedi-like powers and a world inspired by feudal Japan. The Graceling Realm series, beginning with the book Graceling by Kristen Kishore. This book meets the bonus prompt for girl power and not all the good die young. Born with the grace of killing, Casta has been able to kill a man with her bare hands since she was eight and is forced to be her uncle the king's assassin. She never expects to fall in love with beautiful Prince Poe. She never expects to learn the truth behind her grace or the terrible secret that lies hidden far away, a secret that could destroy all seven kingdoms with words alone. His Fair Assassin series, beginning with the book Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. 17-year-old Ismay escapes the brutality of an arranged marriage by entering the convent of St. Moraine, where she learns the god of death has blessed her with dangerous gifts and a violent destiny. An assignment in the heart of Brittany finds her woefully underprepared not only for the deadly games of intrigue and treason, but for the impossible choices she must make. For how can she deliver death's vengeance upon a target who, against her will, has stolen her heart? It sounds like this book will also meet the bonus prompts for girl power and possibly learning can kill you. Okay, those are all of the assassin recommendations I have for you today. Thank you again so much to everyone who commented on the last video or who shared a recommendation with me through Discord. 
If you have read any of the books that I talked about and you want to help give further information, whether it's about the pacing, the plot versus character drive, or any just like keywords or things that you can think of, or if they match a bonus prompt, please let other people know down below any information that you can give to people that is not spoiler, but that just helps people to make a decision on what books they would like, please put that down below. If you have a bookstagram account or a booktube channel and you share your TBR for this readathon, please just tag me. I would love to see what people are planning to read for this readathon. I will be hosting several reading sprints during the week of the readathon, including the one on April 15th at midnight Central European time. So check what that means, where that is for where you are based to kick off the readathon. So join me then. If you have a channel and you'd like to be part of a reading sprint over the course of that week, please reach out to me, comment here, or connect with me through my social accounts that I will link in the description. Okay, that is it for me today. I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.